Welcome to episode two of the Turnbuckle Bandwagon. My guest today, Army veteran, professional wrestler, competitive eater, the self-proclaimed Matt Barkley of the Buffalo wrestling scene, sure. Megan by Ronnie. Sure. Thanks so much for having me on. I, uh, I appreciate it. I love to talk wrestling. So. Thanks, Matt. Well, firstly, before we get into, into the wrestling talk, I, kind of want, I saw a little bit of your AMA yesterday. I mean, I appreciate your, your reason for starting it early. You were just leveling a hunter on World of Warcraft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was like, because uh, the moderator told me to, to give it two hours, and, and I had already worked out. I really didn't have anything else to do. And I was just leveling up a hunter, and I was like, why don't I just go answer the questions now? So There you go. You, know, you can always jump back into, into the Warcraft later. Um, now, I just briefly touch on your time as, as an Army event. You did a tour in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. I did four years Navy, two summers in the Persian Gulf for me. You know, that thank side of the world service. is, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your service. That, that part of the world can be a, a, a boring and dangerous place. Um, it's a place to get inspired to get into competitive eating, though. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I, I you know, I was, I was deployed over to Afghanistan, and, and my cooks kept getting mad at me because I kept going in there and eating all the food. <laughs> uh, we, we had some protein bars. They were Special K bars, and I would go in there, and I would eat, like, uh, four or five at a time and they'd run me mm -hmm. off so um yeah aren't those, they, supposed to, aren't those supposed to be like meal replacement bars like you have one and you're good for like eight hours yeah yeah i think those special <laughs> k bars run like 280 calories so i shouldn't be snacking on them like that but i was uh i, I was working my ass off so i was probably burning three thousand, you know 3500 calories a day so i could afford it nice now you're originally not from buffalo you're you're based there now no, I, uh, I'm an army brat. It's hard to say where I'm from. I've lived everywhere. I went to 14 different schools growing up. Uh, I've lived in a lot of states. I've lived in a lot of countries. Uh, but I, I tell people that Buffalo is my first hometown. I love it here. It's great. I have, I have a friend who lives up there and she, she loves the area. Um, and to getting into wrestling, I mean, if make sure I got my, my notes right here. Uh, you're training, still training or trained at Grapplers Anonymous under Brandon Thurston. Yeah, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of good wrestlers are coming out of Grapplers Anonymous, and I, I'm training under Brandon Thurston, but all those guys have a little bit of their hands in the megabyte pot, so I feel like I'm trained by all those guys. Yeah, I mean, the guys that have come out of there, Red Death, Daniel Garcia, um, Kevin Blackwood, Puff, yeah. Thurston, uh, you know, Jay Freddy's kind of a little, a little bit of a part of that group uh, in and out. Um, when you, I guess, and you've only been training a couple of years now, am I, is that right? Yeah, I, I've been training in a couple of years, and I, I honestly, I, I need to train more. Last year, I was really focused on competitive eating, and I was doing night classes on top of working a regular schedule, so I wasn't in, the, in there as training as much because I was trying to get college done. You know about the GI Bill. I was trying to make some extra money by doing three classes a semester, yeah. and uh, it, it, it was killing me, man, so I've, I've dropped college now, and I'm, I'm I've really stopped focusing on competitive eating and, and now it's just straight wrestling. Straight wrestling. Now, do you, do you still hold your ranking in competitive eating or does that kind of work as how many events you work? Yeah, I'm still ranked 18th in the world. They really only update the rankings probably two or three times a year. Okay. Um, the 4th of July, the Nathan's Hot Dog Contest is, the, is a big factor in your rankings. And last year I, I finished 10th in that. So that was real good for me. And, um, I don't know when they're going to update the rankings again. I, I, I probably should say this now, but um, a couple months ago, I, I retired from professional eating. Uh, and a couple weeks ago, I uh, unretired, but I didn't really want to make a big fuss about it because I, I basically, I, I hit a point a couple months ago. I was like, I got to go all in with wrestling. Uh, and I think I can still competitively eat. I just don't, I, I can't, eat at the level I was eating at but I still love it and I still want to do it okay so kind of a thing where if there's an event that comes along that gets your interest you know you could reach out to the organist like hey can I jump in on this yeah not exactly that I'm, I'm not going to do as many contests as I used to the contests I'm going to do are definitely going to be close by and they're going to be foods I want to eat but um it's it's just been something I've done for five to six years now so it, I, I can't walk away I feel like Michael Jordan when he went to go <laughs> play baseball for a couple yeah of years. <laughs> 
Is it, are there going into a competitive event, like are there nerves kind of similar to like playing sports where you get this weird kind of, I mean, yeah, your weird feeling in your stomach, just a weird way to say it, but are there like that nerves you get that kind of electric feeling before you go into a competitive eating event? Yeah. I, I tell people I don't get hungry until about uh, 30 seconds is over because going on, you know, the introductions, they're a lot like pro wrestling, you know, uh, the, the MCs, they do a real good job of hyping you up and getting you on stage. And then there's a, there's big crowds, you know, at Nathan's I've eaten hot dogs in front of 40,000 people. And, you know, at wing fest in Buffalo, there's probably five, 10,000 people there. So you get on stage and if that's something you're not used to being in front of a crowd like that, it, it could take away your appetite real fast. Yeah. You get, get all knotted up and you're just like, Oh, I can't do this. Yeah. Yeah, it happens, but once I start eating, it goes away. Now, I, I came to know you seeing you at Beyond Wrestling. Um, I saw you had appeared about a year and a half ago, and then most recently, I actually was watching the Thanksgiving show. Yeah. Um, and I saw in your AMA, you actually kind of had to delay some family trips to, to make that Thanksgiving show, or was that was that something else? Yeah, that's a, that's a story not too many people know about. I like to call myself the, the Buffalo backup, uh, because what happened was is that for Thanksgiving, you know, they wanted to book the Buffalo brothers okay. and uh, one of them, one of them didn't want to give up their Thanksgiving with their family. So they reached out to me and I live in Buffalo, New York for two years now. And I hadn't seen my mom in a while. And Thanksgiving's Thanksgiving is the biggest holiday in my family. Go figure the one, you know, you eat. <laughs> but, uh, uh, so Thanksgiving was very important to me. And I told my mom, I'm like, Hey, I, I really can't pass this opportunity to go wrestle up beyond she understood. Uh, I dished my mom and I went to beyond for Thanksgiving. But the, the thing was, is I told her, I was like, Hey, I'm going to come down for Christmas now. It's all good. And then, and then Christmas rolls around and another Buffalo brother didn't want to wrestle for Christmas. And uh, they called for the Buffalo backup. And uh, I said, sorry, mom, I'll see you later. And uh, Yeah. It's, it's, I, I don't know. I love this business. It's not that big a deal. I, I joke about it. I'm not, I'm not salty, you know, at all about it. If, if Buffalo or if Beyond called me today and said, hey, could you get down to Massachusetts right now? I'd jump in the car. In the car and go, yeah. I had had a, a dinner with my family on that day, and I, but I, I couldn't hang out after. Like, we sat down, we had, and I was like, I have to be somewhere in like an hour and a half, so I'm going to have dinner, you know, kiss my grandparents, like my mom, like, okay, see you all later. I'm, I'm heading up to the show. Right. Um, coming to Beyond, had you been like, I would assume with training up there, had you been watching Beyond and watching Uncharted Territory and kind of seeing – how it had grown as, as the weeks went on? Yeah, um, Uncharted Territory is probably my favorite thing in indie wrestling, period. I love the weekly atmosphere. And for some, for some reason, you can see two people fight at Uncharted Territory or at Beyond Wrestling, and it feels like they've never fought before. It feels like, the, you know, like a, it's like a big fight atmosphere. I love the crowd right up on the ring. I just yeah. – I, I love everything about it. I, I love root, rooting for the underdog. So, um Uncharted Territory is by far my favorite thing, so I, I was definitely watching that. Plus, Daniel Garcia just had the run with the title, and I'm a huge Red Death fan, so uh, big big Beyond fan as well. Yeah, Red Death, uh, I mean, he's he's serious. So when I talked to Max Caster last week, he wants to fight Daniel Garcia straight up. He's like, me, him, one-on-one, -on -one, let's do it. Bro, he's um, in for an ass-whooping, I'll tell you that. I, I, <laughs> I've fought Garcia a couple times now, and that, that guy knows how to – he knows how to fight. Yeah, he's pretty much got kind of one speed walk and then just come after you and kill you. And ah. Well, yeah, he tried to kill me. <laughs> that was it. The, um, now, Ev, just as a wrestler and even as a fan, were there any particular matches that kind of stood out to you in Uncharted Territory that you watched and you were just like, you know, the, the, the wrestler brain drops and you're just enjoying it as a fan? Yeah, uh, Puff versus Brandon Thurston is probably my favorite match. Uh, of last year of last yeah probably of last year, yeah, last year. I, I i i hang out with puff quite a lot he's he's a super good friend of mine we you know we did the cinematic match and yep and, that. and um people don't know this about puff but puff can go dude he's 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 a he's an animal on the ring he does a lot of the comedy stuff but when it when it comes time for him to to put up or shut up he can put up so just seeing him in there with brandon thurston really putting on a good classic wrestling match with not too much comedy stuff I, I i popped so hard for that match yeah i think uh, a lot of folks and a lot of fans because beyond uncharted territory started picking up fans in the latter half of the year a lot of people who had maybe seen puff at other shows weren't sure that he could get in the ring and hang with brandon thurston and by the end of that match 
a lot of the reaction on social media was like, oh, I just, I thought he was a comedy guy, but he's getting in there and fighting with Brandon Thurston. Yeah. Great match, man. Shout out to Puff and, and Thurston for that one. Thurston. And, and speaking of Puff, and you mentioned the 4th of July match, I wanted to ask about, uh, that was great. Um, you know, with the Nathan, Nathan's versus, is it pronounced Salins or Salins? I know it's a regional brand. Salins, there. Salins man. They're, they're a Buffalo hot dog. They're tasty as hell. I love me some Salins. It's, it, the, the, the argument sounded a lot like when we talk about pizza here in Connecticut, you know, we have New Haven pizza and there's three different places and everyone kind of, kind of uh, has their, their fiery opinions about what is best. Bro, I'll tell you this, nobody eats Nathan's in Buffalo. So I, I was on that hill by myself. <laughs> <laughs> just kind of standing there like, oh, just got my Nathan's here. Everyone else is getting on Salins. The mm -hmm. video was great. Um, was it something you had always wanted to do or something you and Puff worked out? Or You know, you know what? Uh, Puff was over at my house, and we were playing Mario Kart or something like that. All right. Who's, who, who's better at Mario Kart? Oh, me. I'm a, I'm a monster at Mario right. Kart. Like, do you go – see, I go Luigi. I'm a Luigi guy. So who do you, who do you, who do you, who do you roll with? Uh, I play with the, the small Koopa. I can't remember – their name right now okay but like but well, i like i think lenny i think that's his name okay yeah because a couple I, of my names i like lightweight uh characters so i play with him and uh I, i've been playing mario kart since i was four years old and a <laughs> lot of those tracks are from the super nintendo yep. or nintendo 64 you, you can't touch me on a nintendo 64 or super nintendo track i have those motherfuckers memorized like i can play blindfolded so I, really? I'm, I'm a beast he he's got a he got a wheel controller a couple of days ago, and now he's training up to, to get at me again. But oh, okay. I don't think he's going to get me in Mario Kart. <laughs> so you guys kind of worked out, hey, maybe we should we should try this and do this. and. Yeah, you know, you know we, we both really miss wrestling a lot. Um, and, and we talk about it almost every day. And it was like, why not? Like, we, we have nothing to lose. We both think we can make something really good. I honestly think that that match that me and Puff put out is, is the best thing I've ever been a part of. I'm so proud of how it turned out. We worked really hard. A lot of those shots were hard to get. I destroyed my hot tub for a scene. <laughs> like, I, if, if there's one thing I could ask anybody to do, is just watch that match. If, if you want to do me a favor, just watch that match. If you like it or don't like it, that's fine, but give it a shot. Definitely, yeah. When, we, when, when, the, when this goes up, I will – I will kind of put the 4th of July match or bring it up with it because I really enjoyed it. Um, I really liked during this pandemic how a lot of wrestlers have kind of gotten out of their comfort zone of like, you know what, let's make a production out of this. Let's do something. And everyone, and everyone I follow has really been involved in something like this, be it like the Shakru versus Slade, you and Puff. There's been a couple of the ones down in like the Florida, Georgia. I think Southern Underground Pro did something. Yeah. You know, I really enjoy it. It's just, it's different it's different and it's you get you get because there's no commentary so you just get like brought into it you know it's like watching a movie watching that watching an action movie yeah that's that's what we wanted man we wanted something that people who aren't even wrestling fans can enjoy and i've, I've had numerous people who don't know a thing about wrestling tell me they enjoyed it so hope yeah that's a good but, thing i guess yeah those are great too where people who i have friends who aren't wrestling fans who like see this clip online they're like what is this i'm like oh it's these guys and these guys they work here check this out and you know gets them to kind of you know gets them in the door to, to watch him and man, also yeah i was gonna say man you see me and puff dancing to Katy perry you, you know you have no <laughs> clue it's about wrestling right it was great i i enjoyed it. i'm a Katy perry fan man i dig it also the uh shout out appearance of appearance of uh, Meg megabyte ashley your personal yeah. security yeah she was looking tough there dude she yeah got, man she rolled she got over, the, the t-shirt that's rough. Is 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 uh, Megabyte Ashley gonna be you know appearing anywhere else anytime soon? We're gonna see her. Uh, I don't think she wants to be a like. She'll definitely do the stuff on video, but like right. as far as like a manager role or anything like that, I don't think that's her cup of tea. She really likes being um, at the merch table and, and pushing my merch and, and talking yeah. to fans and, and families and. She really likes enjoying uh, watching the show, so I, I, it would be hard for me to imagine her taking like a like a manager role or anything like that. But yeah. if I'm going to be putting out more of these videos or anything on my YouTube channel, of, of course my wife's going to be involved. You know, definitely yes. Just spe special character, special cameo, make about after she rolls in. Yeah. Um, and for a lot of folks who've recently seen you doing hot ones with with Cody. Oh yeah. How did that? Did they reach out to? How did that come about? Like, did you know it was going to be Cody, or did they just reach out and say, "Hey, we're going to do something." Hot Ones has blown up over the past year, year and a half. Kind of how did that all come about? 
Yeah. Uh, well, I did Hot Ones, the game show with Ashley, uh, the first season that's out right now. I think we were the, the halfway season finale because every TV show likes to do half a season and take a break now. So we were the, the last episode of the first half. Um, we, did, we didn't win that one, and uh, that was fun. They, I don't know how they found me on that. They just reached out to me on Instagram, actually, one day, and okay. lo and behold, I, we wound up doing the show. So uh, they reached out to me a couple of weeks ago, and they said, hey, we're going to do this redemption web series, and we'd like to have you on. Do you know any celebrities? And I, was, I replied back, and I was like, honestly, guys, I, I don't do a lot of pop culture stuff. Uh, I really just watch wrestling and play video games. And they were like, oh, okay, have you heard of AEW? And I'm like, of course I've had, heard of AEW. And they're like, all right, great, we'll find somebody from AEW to be on. And, and I was kind of nervous that, you know, they were going to find somebody that, like, I, maybe I didn't know or something like that. I, I never in my life would have imagined that Cody was going to be on the show. So when, when the camera or when his webcam came on and I saw Cody there, uh, that, that was a real reaction, man. I, yeah. I, I didn't know what to do. I like saw like the, it was like, cause when I saw it and I think it was like, did he know Did they said, cause it seemed like you were just, you know, no clue, no man. clue. I mean, yeah, he did. He, I mean, he just did the shot with you. I mean, he was, he was all in. Yeah. Shout out to Cody. They, uh, the AEW version cut out some, I think hot ones is actually put out like the, the full four version. The okay. AEW, AEW one, they cut it down to like two minutes and the four ones, probably like a five minute video. Uh, but Cody Rhodes, uh, Sean Evans told Cody Rhodes as Cody was pouring the shot, like, hey, Cody, you don't have to do that. Uh, that's that's for Ronnie. And Cody said, no, nah, I'm not going to leave him hanging. That's probably the coolest <laughs> story I had from that moment, just the fact that Cody jumped in there with me. He he definitely regretted it afterwards. He, he said a couple times <laughs> it was the worst mistake he ever made. That hot sauce is no joke. Like, I, I, was, I was fucked up for a week after that hot sauce. Like, I have done this before. And I did it on the show, and I was like, I'll never touch this hot sauce again. But when they told me it's going to be with somebody from AEW, like, I don't care. I'll, I'll drink lava to, sure. to get AEW. So, um, Cody Cody was super cool. He um, he commented on my physique a couple of times, which was nice to hear. Uh, and, and then, you know, the ultimate thing was at the end there where he said, hey, we'd love to bring you out to the AEW ring. So, I'm still, still waiting on that. There we go. I mean, yeah, I mean, everyone seemed like the first time I saw you, they, they announced you coming out. And I'm like, all right, I like the bacon scarf and tights. But then, like, they say you're a competitive eater, man. But, like, your physique, you're like, okay. I mean, I try not to judge anyone because I've seen, you know, like Kobayashi is like, you know, 110 pounds, all these different shapes and sizes. Yeah. And, and, and what is, in terms of maintaining your physique and compet, like, how does, where does that balance come in? Like, do you just, like, hit the gym hard two, three days and then, do your eating. I'm just, I'm, I'm genuinely curious as to how you maintain your, your physique folks watch beyond wrestling, watch that Thanksgiving show. The man, the man, the man's, <laughs> the man's got a physique. It's a physique. Yeah. I, uh, it's, 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 um, it's balanced really. So when I'm training for competitive eating, I eat a lot of low calorie foods. So I'll, I'll eat like, I don't know, a, a ton of lettuce, a ton of grapes, uh, watermelon. I'll eat like a whole watermelon and stuff like that. So good. Uh, as far as balancing the two, if I have a contest coming up, I diet real hard. And I, I think of the, the contest as my cheat meal. Okay. Now that I'm not running a lot of contests, um, I had kind of like let myself slip. I think everybody did once this COVID thing hit. Yeah. And, uh, I was out of the gym for like a month and I had gotten up to about 248 pounds and it wasn't good weight. And, uh, I, I, ever since the AEW or not AEW, ever since the hot ones taping, uh, I've been doing two a days in the, in my gym. I got a gym in my garage and, uh, I'm down to 226 right now. I'm trying to get down to like 215 to be, to be really leaned out. And it's just, um, I, I don't know, man. Like, I just want to be a wrestler. I just, that's that's yeah. that's what it comes down when I when I want to eat something shitty or I don't want to work out. I, I think about how bad I want to do this, and it, it just being a wrestler kind of just like dr drives me to whatever goal I'm going for. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure when Cody said, "Hey, we like to bring you down," like it was like, you know what? Let me hit the gym now before I go to bed, and then I'll get in there in the morning. It, it was that's exactly like that. Ever since Cody has said that, I've been on a whole different level. Uh, I'm not a big social media guy, but I, I'm trying to be now, and uh, I, I'm trying to I'm trying to 
even out my game all around. And, and like you said, man, once Cody said we want to bring you down, the, the, it started ticking. Like, oh, like this is happening. Like, yeah. I got to go. I got to get ready. So uh, I've worked out once today, and I'm going to work out once again. And I'm going to keep working out twice a day until hopefully Cody gives me a call. Yeah, I mean, AEW Dark's been a showcase for, you know, during the, the pandemic has really been a blessing for them because they've had a chance to feature independent wrestlers who maybe normally might not have gotten a chance. You know, when I talked with Max, they brought Max down twice mm -hmm. for two matches. And, um, you know, guys like Serpentico and, you know, Robert Tillman, all these, all these different folks that I kind of heard of, kind of knew, but getting down, you know, to Jacksonville, which is like the home base for them, is there, you know, just fantasy wise, is there anyone you've seen recently that you, you know, co and putting Cody aside, is there anyone that you want to face one on one that you think you match up well with or you think would be a good match that people want to watch? This may be a little bit of a shocker, but when I uh, got out of the Army in North Carolina, I went to go train at a, at a place in North Carolina. I, I don't really want to say the name. Uh, I, I didn't really get along with the trainer. And I only <laughs> trained there for a month. But in that month, I met Griff Garrison when he was probably 17 years old, maybe 16 years old, I think. And uh, Griff Garrison's been on there twice. And okay. he, just had a, he just had a match with uh, Lance Archer, and, and it was a damn good match. And just to see Griff Garrison where he's grown, Griff Garrison may not even know who the hell I am, but I, I knew who he was. And I, I would love, like absolutely love to get an AEW dark and get in the ring with him. Just to, you know, just to, because our, our past really started at the same place and, and here yeah. we would be. It would be, be an interesting story, you know, two guys kind of trained together a little bit, meeting up together at, at AEW. Yeah, um, me, me and him, one day the, the trainer had a, an uppercut uh, class and it was like a tournament to see who could give the best uppercut. Oh. And me and Griff Garrison went back and forth, I swear, for like 30 minutes just uppercutting <laughs> the hell out of each other. That boy can throw an uppercut, and so can I. So I'd love to get back in the ring with him. Yeah, the um, and you mentioned uh, training, and I and I I've, I've been wanting to bring this up when I when I've talked to wrestlers. We talk about culture of training and how there's this old school kind of like abuse slash training, and you didn't want to mention the school, which I totally respect. What has the culture been like up at Grapplers Anonymous? You know, training with Brandon Thurston and all those guys. What is that? What does that culture bring that is different and that it's good because they're Grapplers build a reputation in New York, and building a reputation is being a, a, a solid training school. Grapplers Anonymous is by far the best place to train to be a professional wrestler. If you're out there watching this right now and you want to be a professional wrestler, move to Buffalo and train at Grapplers Anonymous. You're going to train with uh, great trainers. You're going to train with young, hungry athletes. There's, there's so many people at Grapplers Anonymous that should be booked at, at everywhere. Like, there's, there's guys that barely get booked anywhere that – I watch other wrestling shows and I'm like, there's no way that my guys shouldn't be on these shows. Um, I, I Grapplers Anonymous is great. You, you got guys that are taking over the Indies like Puff, Garcia, Blackwood, Bennett, and, and those guys will give you tips. They'll give you advice. They'll train with you. I, I was nervous as hell for my first practice match. My first practice match was with Blackwood and he, he basically held my head and, and, and drag me through it and, and without that I don't I don't know it just it just builds up my confidence it's such a uh, team atmosphere there it's it's really great you know especially for me somebody like who's been in the army who's kind of used to a brotherhood I, I feel like Grapplers Anonymous is 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 the brotherhood and I couldn't say I could say as many great things about it it's endless like I, I love that place you yeah, know I, I want to you know, shout out to Kevin Blackwood. I've seen him wrestle at a bunch of different shows, you know, Wrestling as a Tomorrow show, you know, and you got Empire States up there in Buffalo, beyond. Yeah. He seems to be the type of wrestler, you can put him in a match with anyone and you're going to get a good two great match from Kevin Blackwood. My my best matches of my career are my practice matches with Kevin Blackwood. I would absolutely, uh, as a matter of fact, if, if AEW said, hey, pick your opponent, uh, we're going to be evaluating you. I'd probably pick Blackwood because I, I trust him that much in the ring. Plus, me and him kind of have this dynamic where he's kind of, uh, you know, tattooed up and a little bit edgier, and, yeah. and he's, he's vegan, and I'm a competitive meat eater and a, <laughs> and a, and a military vet. I think our stories kind of kind of mesh up with each other. So, uh, he, he, shout out to Blackwood. He's a great wrestler, and he's really coming into his own. These last couple of months before COVID hit, he, he kind of changed his look just a, a tad bit. And, and I love it. I, 
I think if COVID didn't hit, Blackwood would probably be signed right now. He's that good. Yeah, he's um, yeah. The 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 contrasts are different. He's I've seen him like at his merch table. He's very quiet, nice, pleasant. But the look is, you know, he's got the hair and the tats, and then you're kind of the clean cut type. Yeah. So the the, the dynamic works very well. Yeah, I'd love to feel a Blackwood somewhere. <laughs> I mean, and, and the show, you talked about the environment at Beyond, and I want to go back to that real quick. You know, for folks who maybe have only seen it online or kind of new to Beyond, you as a wrestler walking into, like, the White Eagle or a Beyond show, what is that, like, what is that energy like for you as a wrestler seeing, you know, you come out to this room, there's maybe, you know, some chairs, but everyone's around the ring. You get in that ring, and they're right there on you. What's, what's that like, you know, your tag matches or your singles matches there? For you, what's that like? Like, what's that feeling like? Oh man, it's 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 like going to war. It's like going to battle, dude. It's it's crazy. You come out and those those people are there and they're with you and it's really great because for somebody like me, uh, when I went to go wrestle there, man, I got like 800 Twitter followers. Those people didn't know who the hell I was. So for me to be able to come out there and connect with those people eye to eye, face to face, even before I got in the ring, was was phenomenal. And then the second time there, when I went for the the one on one match with Thurston. Yeah. I was feeling a little bit unconfident, to be honest with you, because it was, it was my, what, 16th, 17th match ever. And, I, you know, it's at Beyond Wrestling. And here I am, a big fan of the promotion, you know, wrestling one-on-one -on -one with the guy who trained me. Uh, and, and I got in the ring, and they started chanting hot dog shit. And <laughs> once, once they started chanting hot dog shit before the match started, once I knew those guys were with me, man, all my nerves went out the window, and I was just ready to try and put on as good of a match as I could. So that yeah, happened you know, wow. they have a, they have a, the, the beyond crowd and I've, I've been up there. I try to make up to at least one or two shows a month with my schedule. Um, it's their relationship with Brandon Thurston is singular because he's just, he's a great wrestler and no one can deny that. But you know, his, his face doesn't change. He gets cranky. Like there've been times where they've announced like these big matches for him and he's just standing off to the side. They announce it. He just like, boom, poker face, stone face. What's it like to, to, to get a re what's, do, do you guys, like, compete to get a reaction out of him? Like, he just seems so just, like, stalwart. And... I think I think Brandon Thurston's one of those guys that after you've known him for a week, he is who you think he is. Like, he's just very <laughs> straightforward, um, which is great to have in a teacher because if you do something that you th that he thinks sucks, he'll, he'll let you know that it sucks. And, yeah. uh, uh, and when Brandon marks out for you or Brandon gives you praise, you, you feel like you do something really good because there's not, not a whole lot of that to be passed around. So the, the guy that's on camera at beyond, that's pretty much who Brandon Thurston is. Yeah, was, I've just, you know, watching him wrestle is great, but then seeing him not react when wrestlers like watch, seeing wrestlers watch wrestling is always interesting because you all react to different things, but he's just out there stands up against the wall, kind of just, you know, and that's, and that's what you get. It's just like a gargoyle or something. I, I'm the opposite. I love to watch wrestling with people who don't watch wrestling just to see what they react to. Uh, before we went on camera, I was mentioning that I was watching Uncensored WCW 98. Yeah. And my wife, um, Raven, Raven got handed a sign from okay. somebody and it said, use this sign. And he hit him over the head with it and ripped <laughs> the sign up and there's a stop sign in it. And my wife marked harder for that than I've ever seen her mark for <laughs> anything in my life. And that got my wheels turning, you know? Like, there's a reason she's marking out for something like that. So it, when you go to wrestling shows, especially indie shows, there's always people out there who, who don't know anything about wrestling. And you got to entertain those people as well. Yeah, that's – I've brought friends to indie shows, and they may not be independent wrestling fans. But I've told them, like, it's not it, – it is about the wrestling, but you're going to be entertained. You know, mm -hmm. give it a shot. You know, folks out there, if you've never been to a show, you've got Empire States up in Buffalo. You've got organizations there here in New England. I know uh, Ronnie said that, you know, training in Buffalo is is where you want to go. New England's doing pretty good, too. We got Creative Pro in New York. We got some good schools here, too. This whole region of the country is is where you want to come and watch independent wrestling right now, if I may say so, as a, as a fan who watches a fair amount of wrestling. Yeah, I think the Northeast is really taking off. I know back in my day, when I, 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 used, I was big into indie wrestling uh, back when I was 16, 17, and it seemed like back then that California was really the region that you, yeah. you had to go to to watch all the good people. But now I think it's the Northeast, man. There's so much talent up here. Just, just look at a Beyond show. It's, it's stacked. The, yeah, the region, like when I, when I was growing up, it was kind of like California, Texas, Florida, yeah, it would only be so good, and then you had to, you had to leave Connecticut, you had to leave New England, 
-hmm. and it's not like that anymore. Guys come up here and get signed. Like, you know, people seeing Keith Lee and Donovan Dijak tear each other up on NXT. I've seen that in Connecticut. I've seen that show in Connecticut. I've seen it yep. beyond, you know, it's the, the trends are getting set here and it's, you know, I, I think it's great. And it's a great time. If you're a fan, COVID has put a damper on that, but things are winding back up. Uh, you know, beyond's got a show coming up. I know other shows are kind of starting. Is there anything going on up that way? Or is everyone still kind of in a holding pattern? New York's rough, man. Uh, because, you know, I, I think Como's did a great job with New York, but he had to be really strict because of New York City. Uh, it's such a, a big city, but unfortunately here in Buffalo, we get hit with restrictions that are that are really meant for New York City. So I think I think New York State's a really hard place to run a show right now. Uh, I would think for me personally, if I was going to be on a show soon, it would probably be in Ohio or Pennsylvania where it's a little bit more relaxed. No, no, no. Uh, but for New York State, it's probably going to be a little bit. I, I've heard from other people who are who are bookers that they put out guidelines for wrestling, and it's it's like impossible to me. Is yeah, I know there's been a couple shows. GCW's done some shows that have worked out. Beyond's doing Atlantic City, so we'll see. I hope as we come out of this, you know, we get wrestling back. It may not be what it was before, but I'm I have no problem going to a Beyond show and having a mask on and having to be a little bit of distant because Beyond shows can be everyone kind of on top of each other which i'll miss that part for you know a bit we'll see yeah i mean that's that's gonna be uh, a tough personal choice as a fan I, I i i don't know what to make of that whole situation but i know as a performer i would feel safe with somebody like drew running the show so i would i would hope that the fans feel safe and you know if, if you don't feel safe then then just don't go but hopefully i i i've I've seen a lot, some of the guidelines and stuff that he's put out. So I would think as a fan, you should be good. Just follow the rules. Wear a damn mask. Exactly. Wear a mask, drink water, hydrate, be nice to each other. You know, that's, I feel like that's covers everything. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, it's, you know, you mentioned like old WCW pay-per-views. I was watching great American bash 95, 96. And I feel like that's that era of wrestling just before WCW blew up was more had a lot more entertainment than people want to give it credit for mm -hmm. you know i feel like watching like you know watching like a 20 year old ray mysterio and d malenko tear it up you know is great stuff or seeing like the dungeon of doom uh do you sometimes think you know wrestling maybe misses some of that or could use a little bit more quote unquote cartoon or yeah i i would say my favorite um era of wrestling is is right before the Attitude Era really took off. I like the stuff like 92 to 95, 96. You know? right. I like that era of wrestling. I uh, also like the Ruthless Aggression Era quite a lot. Um, I, yeah, I, I do think that wrestling could use some more of that, but I don't know. This this thing is always evolving, and there's so many – there's something for everybody, right? So, like, if I, I know what I like, but I don't – if, if somebody else doesn't like that, that's fine, dude. Like, I, I've met people who, who love to see Puff go out there and dance and, and have comedy matches and stuff like that, and they could care less if two big guys go out there and beat the hell out of each other. And I'm not going to sit here and tell them that they're wrong for liking what they like. So I, I'm, I'm A-OK -okay with where wrestling is right now, and I, I think we're heading in a good place. Wrestling's for everybody, so. Wrestling is for everybody. And quickly before I go, I love the fanny pack, your hot dog fanny pack. Where'd that, where'd that come from? Just random purchase somewhere? Well, my, my favorite move that I do, my, my favorite wrestler of all time is The Rock. So I do a move called the People's Hot Dog where yes. I, do, I do the People's Elbow except I bite into a hot dog on my way down. Um, so I had to come up with somewhere to, to get the damn hot dog to the ring. <laughs> so I, I wear the fanny pack out to the ring and, uh, I, I, I just typed in hot dog fanny pack on Amazon and that's where I got that thing. I, I, I've tried to come up with other ways to, to get a hot dog to the ring, but the only other option is to wrestle with it stuffed in my trunks. And I just, I don't, I don't think that's going to work out. And I really, I don't, it seems kind of inappropriate to reach down in my trunks and pull out a hot dog. So <laughs> I guess the fanny pack is the best option I got. During the, uh, I don't know if you watched it back, but during the Thanksgiving match, uh, when you threw the fanny pack on, Sidney Bacabella was like, what's he doing? That's illegal. I'm like, is it though? Is it yeah. really? I don't think it is. Hey, J.J. Garrett wrestles with one on for the entire match. So it can't right? be for me to put one on. 
Hey, in, in, that, in that match, Ohio match, just a, a, one more quick question for me as a fan. A lot of people say J.J. Garrett's a lot stronger than he looks. Yeah. Okay, you verified. Oh, I'm just, yeah, def, definitely, man. It, it's funny because I forgot what he said, but he, he flexed. And somebody started laughing at him. And he goes, this is all natural. He's actually, like, strong, a lot stronger and tougher than, than what he looks. Uh, I, 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 I think J.J.'s a hell of a competitor. I'd love to get in a one-on-one match with him over, over the rights to the fanny pack, I guess. <laughs> you each put the, you put the fanny pack up. Winner, yeah. winner, winner get winner winner takes all fanny packs. Yeah, the, yeah. The lo- and the loser can no longer wear a fanny pack. That should be like the the, the the big stipulation. That's 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 a rough one for both of us. I think we both need <laughs> our fanny packs. So that that's pretty much a death match for either one of us. Oh no, oh no. Well, Ronnie, thanks so much. Uh, where can folks find you on social media or wherever out there on the internet? Uh, you can find me at any uh, on every social media at Megabyte Ronnie. Uh, Megabyte is spelled M-E-G-A-B-Y-T-E, uh, Ronnie, R-O-N-N-I-E. I'm on Instagram, at Megabyte Ronnie. I'm on Twitter, at Megabyte Ronnie. You can follow me at YouTube at YouTube.com backslash Megabyte Ronnie if you want to see some eating videos or some wrestling videos. Uh, I think I have a TikTok. I'm, I'm not sure. Any, <laughs> any social media platform, if you type in Megabyte Ronnie, you'll find me. Yeah, folks, check out that 4th of July. I'm going to try and include it when we post this. I'm going to include a link to that video to have on both uh, because it's, it's a great match. It's entertaining. Katy Perry, Megabyte Ashley, you know, hot dog debates. What more could you really want on 4th of July? Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, it's funny because we, we went out there to film the last scene where we get knocked into the water uh, the night before and we ran out of daylight. So I just, I, I wear, I wear a thong under my gear for all my matches because like five years ago, I saw a Lance Storm tweet where he said, Hey, you should, if you're out there and you're a wrestler, you should think about all your audiences and they don't want to see, you know, your underwear line. And I was like, well, if Lance Storm says I should wear a thong, then I should wear a thong. And uh, advice from a great wrestler. You know. Right. So the night before I was like, I'm going in this damn lake. So I just stripped down to my thong and I jumped in the lake and, <laughs> and posted it on TikTok and it got like, I don't know, 16, 17,000 views. I wish I could just go talk to all 17,000 people and be like, hey, go go watch the wrestling match. This is this is the better part, you know? Come on over, you know? Yeah. You get, you get thong plus some other stuff, you know? We're, hey, we're man, trying to... if, if that's what it takes, I'll, I'll wrestle Puff in the thong. If that's, if that's what it takes, <laughs> 15,000 views on that on that 4th of July show. But, yeah, definitely go check that out, guys. It's, it's the best thing I've ever been a part of, and I think you'll really like it. Okay, well, again, Ronnie, thank you so much. Uh, we're going to do our best to have this posted. Um, again, thanks again, Ronnie. Hope to see you in the AW ring, man. I'll be following you, cheering you on if they you get the call down there. I, I, I hope so. Uh, I'm, I'm the type of guy who I don't really believe something's going to happen until it happens. So I'm not holding my breath until those plane tickets come. But uh, I, I'll be ready for when those plane tickets come, that's for sure. Okay. Ronnie, again, thanks so much, man. Thank you.